So this is the interface of Adobe Bridge. This is the best um, I feel uh, when I work with Adobe Bridge. This is one of the best asset management tools that I've worked with. Um, so the good part about Adobe Bridge is that you can um, access all your um, creative files, I would say Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere profiles, all from here. This is the one stop shop for you. And the good part is that, you know, you could say I can do that in Explorer as well. But the good part about um, Adobe Bridges that you can have the files displayed in your browser like you would see in Explorer. The PSD files do not show a display, but here in Bridge you do see it. So this is uh, the actual interface or the welcome uh, screen for Adobe Bridge. Um, now, um, I would go and get to batch rename. So you see that I've got multiple files in here and maybe I want to organize them, you know, in a similar format or have similar names for them. So all I have, all I need to do is just select all the files. It just press the shift key uh, on my keyboard and so select the first and the last file and then go to tools options. The first option there is batch rename. You can also use the keyboard shortcut of control shift R. When I click batch rename, this dialog box comes in front of me where I can use the selected options um, starting with the preset, which is like default. Uh, and if you click on the drop down, if you have any last used preset, you can use it as well. Now the destination folder, whether you want the renamed files in the same folder or would you want it to move to another folder or copy it to another folder? So I would like uh, it to be uh, renamed in the same folder. Now new file names. Um, will decide as to what exactly your new files uh, name would be. So text, um, what exactly sh should, the, should be the text in the file name? So I would just um, say maybe beauty poster now. Um, the sequence number, whether or not you would like to have a sequence number and you can have multiple filters out here. You can also subtract it if you just want uh, one uh, name for it. So I will try and start the sequence from one here. Options uh, as to how exactly would you want the compatibility? Would you want it to be for Windows or Mac? Followed by preview. It will show you what the current file name is and what the new file name would be for you. It also shows the number of files that would be processed. Uh, here under preview, you'd be able to see what your file names would be converted to. So I'd already tried it before. So you see similar names, but a lot of times where there are different names, it will be really convenient for you and automatically it will happen. So I'll just click OK and click on rename. And it'll take a minute and it will be done. So you see all the names have changed here. It was beauty one uh, prior to this and now it's beauty post one. So how f that is how fast it is and that is how you can quickly do it followed by image processor. Now, uh, for example, if you have got JPEG images like you see all these files here are JPEG images and you would like to convert them to a different format, maybe. So a tool from within Photoshop, which you can access from within Photoshop also. But if you don't want to go through that hassle of going to Adobe Photoshop, you can go under tools, Photoshop and click on image processor. Now this dialog box uh, will open in front of you, which will have multiple options. One by one, I will explain them to you. So select the images to process. Now, for example, if you're from Adobe, uh, if you're using Adobe Bridge, the files would be automatically selected like they're selected in my case, and it says that 34 files would be processed. I will check this option if I want them to open in camera raw first, then select location to save processed images. For example, if you want it in the same location, um, I will not do it uh, right now. I will show it to you from within Photoshop, but just explaining you the options right here. And then what file type would you want to convert it to? So it's like uh, if I want them to be saved as JPEG, I can click here. If I want, um, if I have JPEG images and I want them to turn into Photoshop uh, file format, I can choose that. And similarly for TIFF, uh, TIF, if there is any action that I want to run on the files, I can go ahead and do that as well. But as of now, I don't want to run any action. It's just um, as to how you can fast. I mean, as you were renaming the files in the same format, you can convert the format as well, uh, followed by contacting. Um, the next feature that we would look at would be building contact sheets. Now, um, sometimes you have multiple images and you would want um, to maybe send them for approval, but you don't want to send every single image. Right. So in that case, contact sheets could be really helpful. For example, if I have these five images that I need to send out. 
uh, for approval uh, for any project. I don't want to send each one of them. Then I can go to tools and go to Photoshop and then I can go to contact sheet. So this dialog box for contact sheet will open. It will um, the source images. It could be from bridge. Uh, followed by what units would you want? What is the width of the document that you'd like? What's the resolution? Would you like to flatten or less? Which we would not because we might want to make changes in the images. Then thumbnails as to how exactly how many columns you would like. How would you like to place it? Would you like to place it across or would you like to place it uh, from like in a straight manner? Would you want it to be auto space or there's some significant uh, spacing that you have in mind that you would like to uh, mention? So you can click on use auto. You, I generally use auto spacing. That's highly convenient. And I decide the number of rows and columns. I can change that as well. If you have images that are not uh, rotated or if you want them to rotate while you put them in the contact sheet, you can click on rotate for best fit or not and just click OK. And that will open in Adobe Photoshop. So it's opening right now. You see the layers being created there. So I had the column width to be four, so that is why it shifted to contact sheet two. Closing these documents right now. So whenever you have five, multiple documents that need to be sent out, um, you can use the contact sheet. Now, one of the most important and uh, really time saving feature in Adobe Bridge is workflow. Now, this was just added last year and uh, can be really um, helpful when you have to perform multiple tasks as one. Just to show you exactly how a custom, I mean, a general workflow looks like. Um, I can show you this task diagram and then I will show you as to how you can create one as well for yourself. So um, for example, if this is a custom, I mean, this is a custom workflow created by Adobe Bridge. So if you want uh, to have multiple files which you want to rename, you want to change their format, maybe resize them. So all of these actions uh, in place of applying them one by one, what you can do is you can have all of these tasks aligned one after the one like it's in a flow chart and then drop your files over that workflow and uh, it will automatically bridge will do the uh, processing for you without you being able to you know perform every single step one by one really time saving process because you don't have to pro, uh, go ahead and uh, perform each step one by one. So I go and create new workflow. So I do have this task diagram in front of me. I click on add task and the minute I click on add task, there's this drop down which will give me which option would I want to start with. So I just click batch rename. And I would want to give uh, a preset name here. So just uh, click save here. I already have actually one created, so I will just name automation one. So it's saved. Now, what are the saving options? Uh, like for every file, because it has to have a, a location to be saved to. If you want it to be saved to the original file location, you can go ahead and uh, choose the original file location or maybe transfer it to specific folders. Um, followed by, if you want, you know, if you want or uh, to have like unique file names, you can choose this option. Override existing file. You can go ahead and do that as well and skip file. If you just want to skip any particular file, it's just a, a way of managing conflicts uh, for the files that you're looking at. Um, then what names would you like? Like we were deciding in the batch rename, uh, we can have that here as well. And then it will give me what the current file name is and what the new file name is. I already have one created, so I'll just quickly choose to my one of my image and show as to how exactly I will use the batch rename and change format options and then resize to 50% uh, or 100% scaling. And this shows me one job and one file that needs to be processed and I click on start workflow. So you see this particular. Thing is automatically happening. I don't have to do anything. We'll wait a minute or so. And this automatically automatically will happen at the location. 
<clears throat> it does take a minute or so because there are multiple steps being performed at the same time. And this file is processed. I, I did it for one file, but you can do it for multiple files, files as well. So if I go to this particular folder, which is automation session, creating action, you would see that this particular file that I've selected, view Steve poster 101 or JPEG has now been created and it's the name has changed. It's and the file format is now PNG. Could you see the difference? And it automatically happened. I just had to decide one workflow. Uh, so that's all for Bridge and how what automation you can do from within Adobe Bridge. Now let's move to Photoshop. Um, so we'll begin with um, creating an action. Uh, we'll start with actions as to how you can create actions, how you can play and manage actions, and then conditional actions. So if you don't have the actions panel already uh, open in your um, workspace, you can go to the window panel and then select actions. You can use the keyboard shortcut Alt F9 as well. So I have this or default actions and some that I have created on my own. Uh, this is one way of having the actions. I mean, this is how you, they look, but you can also go to the button mode and then um, you'll have the buttons. Just by clicking the button, you can have the action enabled. So we'll go back to the normal mode and we'll start with creating an action for that. I will choose an image here. Let's choose this model poster. So the base that I'm taking as or the foundation that I'm taking um, for this particular session is that, you know, I'm in conversation with a beauty campaign partner and uh, they want me to design a campaign which wants to celebrate a real beauty of women. And what they want from me is like uh, a couple of pictures they've sent me out like 30 to 40 images. And what they want from me is that I should have all the images black and white because they don't want any distraction on the poster. And they want, they want to have text on every single image that every woman is beautiful and uh, celebrating real women. So that there are multiple ways of doing it. I can, I can open every image, apply a, a black and white layer to it. And then I can go ahead and add text to it. That will take a minute or so per image. And if I have to do that for 100 images, uh, just imagine it will take around 100 minutes. So with the actions feature, we can save that time just by performing action on one particular image. I can have the rest of it sorted. So if I go and create uh, a new action, this actions panel on the bottom uh, right corner, you'll see the plus sign and click on action. The action panel opens in front of you. Since my uh, campaign is around black and white and uh, text, so I will just name it black and white beauty uh, uh, set actions as to uh, what are the actions you'd like to bring it under default actions. There are also function keys that you can associate with your actions. Right now I'm doing none, but you can also go ahead and do that. Uh, under the color feature, you did see the button mode, so they were color coordinated buttons, right? So if you want uh, your buttons to be in a different, uh, in, a, in, a, in a specific color, here I'm choosing it to be red. And just the moment I click record, it'll, it'll start recording the action for me, but you don't have to worry. It actually doesn't record the time you take on the uh, image. It just records the actions. And while I'm creating, you will, uh, just keep noticing the actions panel and you will see that um, all of these uh, actions are getting recorded one and one, whatever I perform. OK, so I start, hit the record button. You see that this red um, recording button starts here. So I go here. And I click on a new layer. And I click on black and white. So the minute I do black and white, this image turns to black and white. I can switch to the text to I mean, if you if I want, I can go ahead and adjust patterns if I want. But right now I'm trying to keep it simple and then I will choose the text tool. You can do that on the left hand side in the tools panel. Also, I'm just hitting the T key on my keyboard and I just start writing it. I can increase the font size to maybe 16 or 18. The color I want is maybe blue. 
OK. And then I click. Every. Woman is. Beautiful. Hashtag celebrating real beauty. So that's the hashtag that the brand wants on every poster. Now I just hit the checkbox and I have this text. If I want, I can increase the text as well. Now I have, do you see on the right hand side, two actions have been recorded. One is making an adjustment layer and one is making the text layer. You can expand it to see what exactly has happened inside it and make text layer. So these actions are recorded. Now I can stop that. And we'll see as to how an action works here. For that, I'll switch to button mode and I have the black and white beauty created here. Now let me pick up some images from Bridge. Um, let's see. Let me pick this one. Now, if I click on this particular. You see how instantaneously that happens. I didn't have to do anything. The minute I clicked on black and white beauty, it turned my image from that bright yellow colored image to this, right? And I can do that for multiple images as well. I just showed you one right now. Now you would be like Vidushi, this is a landscape image. If what if if I want it to be for um, a portrait image, will that work the same way for you? You're absolutely right. There are two ways again of doing it. I can either create an action which would be around black and white portrait. Um, for example, let me pick a portrait picture here. Now if I use um, this particular action, which is for um, I would say the landscape image that might not come out of that correctly because that's designed with the perspective of um, a landscape image. So I go ahead and undo the, my action and then I have uh, my portrait action already created. So I just click on black and white portrait and you see how that the, the positioning of the text has changed. So um, I have both these action created. Now, if you would be like, you'd be like Vidushi, I just don't want to have like different actions. Um, I just want one particular action and I would want Photoshop to decide whether it's a portrait image or a landscape image. We can definitely do that as well. Let me close it out to clear out the space a little bit. Now I have these multiple images which are portrait and landscape, so I select them all. Just hit enter. And I have all these images. I have an action called black and white universal named on the same lines. The black and white portrait is also making an adjustment layer in a text layer and I have already created black and white beauty. So what I have under the black and white universal is I want Photoshop to decide whether it's a portrait image or and um, or a landscape image and apply the action automatically. But this can be done with the help of conditional actions. So what I can do is I can have two of my actions decided one for landscape, one for portrait, and then I can make a universal action. I show you as to how just simply click on new action and I am saying conditional action. Again, I can have any color decided. No function key I would want to associate. Just click record. And from the top, this uh, hamburger menu that I have, just click on insert conditional. Now, when upon opening the conditional dialog box, you'll see if the current document is landscape and you have multiple options in here, you have you can select anything. I will select if document is landscape. Then I have to play the action which says um, black and white beauty, which I have recently created or just black and white, which I had created by practicing for the session and then um, play the action, which is black and white portrait. So if the image, if Photoshop finds out that the image is landscape, it will go ahead and pick up one action. If not, then it will pick up another. So I just click OK and you see this. If action is created in here, I can click on stop and my action would be created. 
So these are the actions that are recorded under it. I'll just maximize it a bit so that you can see. Now I turn to button mode. And this is a portrait image. I don't have to decide which one I would want to, um, whether I have to put the portrait action, the landscape option. I just click on conditional action and it and it will automatically take the settings of the portrait. Um, if I go to the landscape one and I choose conditional action, it will automatically choose the settings of the landscape one. Now you'd be like, Vidushi, do I have to really open um, all the images one by one and apply actions? Wouldn't that be time consuming or wouldn't that be equally time consuming? Um, yes, we do have a feature that can save time in that reference as well which is called the batch processing feature, which we're going to have a look at right now. I'll just click on close all. And I don't want to save it. I go to automate, which is under the file menu and click on batch. Now this dialog box opens in front of me, which is um, which will ask me for certain inputs. It looks complex, but trust me, it isn't. Once you start doing it, it'll be as handy and it'll save you a lot of time. So um, the first option is the play option, which will ask me as to what actions I would want to apply. By default, it selects the last action that you have used in Photoshop. So like I use conditional action, so it will choose that option. Now um, you have a list of all the actions that you've already created in Photoshop. So right now I'll keep it selected to conditional actions. What is the source um, file that you would want? So I can choose it. Um, like if I want to go from bridge, it can be done from bridge as well. And that way it will not ask me for the source files. But right now I do need to uh, select the images. So I go to create action. I have a folder created. Give me one second. Go ahead and do that from bridge. Generally, I use bridge for for tools, batch processing, and exactly same dialog box. Override action open open commands. Sometimes in your actions, there's a possibility. So now the source has changed to bridge. You can have it in open file also. You can import or you can choose a particular folder as well. Now um, the options which says override action open command. Sometimes in your actions while you're creating them, there are several features like open or save. So it just wants an input whether or not you would want to follow that command. Would you want to open your files while you're doing it or just override that action? So I, I don't have any open actions, so I'll leave it as is. Include subfolders. Yes, if I have subfolders, I would want those images to be processed as well. Now suppress file open uh, option dialog box. For example, sometimes when we're performing actions, um, there are dialog boxes that will open. Would, we, would, would I want them to come up or would I want to suppress those? Leave it as is. I don't feel there are any color profile warnings that would be coming as well. Now errors, for example, there are any errors that um, Photoshop encounters while processing the images. So would uh, would you want uh, to stop for errors or would you want all the L errors to log the file just in case you use the second option, which is log errors to file. You will have to choose a location where you want that file to be saved. Right now I leave it to stop for errors. Now destination, like everywhere we've decided as to where exactly uh, we would want uh, our files to be saved. So it's here. You have three options, uh, save and close, which is like Photoshop will do it in the same folder itself when you click save and close. Um, or you can choose a specific folder where you want all your files to be. As of now, I just want to show you as to how batch processing works. I'm choosing none as the option. And I quickly click OK, and you will see the magic happening. I'm not doing anything. It's processing all the images for me. And within fraction of seconds, the time that I took on one image, it is doing for every image that I have. Like just you can have you can pick any image you would like. And it's not uh, the purpose for me. Now you'd be like, Vidushi, is there a way that, you know, without opening Photoshop? I mean, you might not ask, but there is a way that you can do all of that or you can do achieve all of that without opening Photoshop as well by creating an executable file from outside of from within Photoshop. But you but if you drag and drop your files to Droplet 
um, which is the feature I'm going to talk about. Um, you will not have to even open Photoshop and you'll be able to process the images exactly in the same manner. The dialog box will look exactly the same. Um, all the steps would be exactly the same. But for now, I will close all these files and I'll click no. I don't want to save these changes and apply to all. So again, automate. Then I'll go to create droplet. Exactly the same of um, dialog box, just where you would want to save the droplet. Um, for keeping it handy, I'll choose the desktop. I will name it my beauty campaign droplet. You see this uh, file type is executable, so I just click save. So I have it saved here. What actions you would want to play? Uh, default actions. <clears throat> Include all subfolders. You don't have to choose the source files because you can have your source files coming from anywhere. Um, then go to again the same options. Destination, I'm choosing none. Just want to show as to how a droplet works. So just click OK and on the desktop you will see that this is a Photoshop droplet that has been created. I will open my files. Um, let's see which ones I would want to take. Let's see if I can if I want this one and I drop one of my files here. And you see, I'm just I've done it for one image, but that can be done for multiple images as well and how time saving it is. So um, we've done with a batch rename. We've done with a droplet and actions. Any questions so far? All right. Um, then we move to image processor, which we did talk about a bit in the bridge section as well. It's exactly the same thing as batch processing, but the only thing that it'll do here is it comes under the script section under file menu. When you click on it, it will help you convert the file format as well. All these files that you're going to create would be in our Photoshop. Uh, this will be the Photoshop PSD format, but if you want them to be created at a different location uh, in a certain file format, uh, image processor can help you do that and you can also perform or run the action under the preferences panel from here. So I'll show you that as well. Um, use up. I have I can select the folder from here and. Or I can go under maybe. Bridge. Or tools. Image processor. So I had 11 files selected. I want them to be saved to a folder that I create. Create a new folder, which would be um, beauty. Campaign image or just beauty. I leave it right now and then I open it. Click OK. So that's my destination folder. I want to save them as JPEG. Um, if I if you want to resize it to fit, I don't want them to. So I'll just leave this unchecked and the action that I want to run uh, would be conditional action. I'll go ahead and. One of the features that I missed is uh, which is uh, by selecting the images to process. If you want the images to open uh, to apply the settings, you you can check this option and the images will first open in camera row and apply the settings here. OK, I click on run. And again, the same thing is happening, but this time we will see the output in the destination folder. And I can go to my files. I have beauty in here. There's a JPEG folder here. And you see all these images have been converted. The JPEG file format, they're all black and white. So this is another way of um, 
fastening the process of content creation for you. Now, one very important uh, feature, or I would say a very crucial um, in its format is uh, creating uh, documents or files um, using variables. Now, I open my base document to exactly show you what I'm talking about. So for example, if I have to create posters, uh, which in my case I'm creating for a pet adoption, um, um, I would say pet adoption organization, and they want me to have the dog's picture, uh, the name of the breed, and a little about that breed on this particular poster. So they want me to create 10 such posters for different, different um, breeds and descriptions should be different. The images should be different. So how possibly I can achieve that with the help of automation feature available in Photoshop. So I have this base background that is created. I will add a few text layers here. So I have got my text layer, text tool already chosen. So I'll go ahead and click on animal breed here. This is one text field that I want. Then I click OK. Then I want another text field which have description. So these are nothing but variables that I'm creating which can help me create multiple documents at the same time. So I'll go ahead and choose the font to be like a little smaller than what my heading is. I'll just go to 14. Now I want an image as well, so I can go to file. Just place this first, go to file, place embedded, and I can maybe have this image. Hold on the shift key to resize and ensure constraints. So this is how I want each of my image to look like. I want the dog poster here. I want the description about the dog here and the name of the breed here. OK, how I can do that? I can I need to go to image variables and define. So the first step in the process of uh, automating or creating multiple documents or multiple um, images or posters at the same time would be to start with defining the variables. OK, so I go ahead. Let's have a look at the layers first. So it will be like uh, I have two text layers and one image layer and I have my background which I want to stay in art. So I don't want that to change, but all these things I need to change with every. So I go to images, variables, define and I have layer by layer. I have all the names. So first of all, I want my animal breed variable. Now I want the text replacement in this case, so I'll go ahead and have text replacement. Now um, it is very important because there is a source or content source that I need to have to be able to provide information and input to Photoshop. So I have a CSV file already created. So I have the animal breed details and the image locations. So I have the names here, the details and the images. So what is the name of the header should be the name of the text variable here. Make sure you don't have any spaces. If you have spaces, it will not accept it. The minute I have defined the variable, you see there's an asterisk sign that is there that comes in front of the layer name. This is layer one that has been decided. Now second is something which is the description. Now description in my CSV file is details. So I copy it, go to Photoshop, and just click text replacement with details. And that again has been defined. Another is I want to replace my image. And just click on pixel replacement or the method that you would want, whether you want to fit it, whether you want to fill in as is. I will most of the times fit works, so I'll be choosing fit as of now and the pixel variable. I think the name is image in my CSV file. Let me just cross check once. Yes, it is. So I'll go ahead and have the image file named. 
and I have defined all the three variables that I need to replace. I see all the three asterisks in here. I can quickly just check. I think uh, right here, it's the image. I think it's the retriever that is the name of my layer, so I'll redefine it. One second. I think this is a smart object I've placed as embedded, so I need to rasterize it first. Um, otherwise, it won't take that as a variable. So I go and I can decide my variables. Retriever pixel variable image. Same options. If I don't save it, then I will have to redefine it. Animal breed, text replacement. Animal breed without a space. Then the next is description and its details in my CSV file. Just click OK and my variables would be created. The next is that I need to import a data set. So the data set can be created, uh, should be in the CSV file format. Make sure it's not open in Excel while you're trying to open it. So I'll close it from here. And just. Go to my image menu again, go to variables. Now it will give me the data sets option as active. I click in here and. Then it will ask me on the right hand side to import. Now I need to select the file. I have it. Under the so it's a TXT format. I choose the CSV here. And then I load it here. Now encoding automatic replace existing data sets. OK, now I have this data set. And you will see the preview down under wherein it's the animal breed. It will be replaced by Labrador Retriever. The details and the image would be this one. I have multiple. I have 10 data sets, so. I'm sorry for shop crashed. I'll just open it again. Well, this has been by far as in um, the automation using variables has been my most favorite and has saved so much time for me whenever I'm trying to create assets um, which are in similar format. So just need to add another. Text layer. So because I was practicing and I already created, so I have um, these data sets already created. So I'll exactly show you how everything turns out to be. So this is how exactly um, this will do the purpose for me. Solve uh, the purpose for me. Now going back to my original image. Quickly adding text layers here and defining the data sets again. Really naming them short. Another text layer that I need to add, which would be description, not that much text. Maybe 16 or 14. Yes. And then I will place the image. Any image I can place. Just click OK. Rasterize this layer. And then quickly go to my image menu, go to variables, define. Pixel replacement with image. So it's a one time uh, thing that you will have to do. I'm doing it again because Photoshop crashed on me.
text replacement animal breed. Click OK. Again, go to image to find these data sets. Import data sets. It, I, it automatically has my file selected. Click OK. And you see if I move all of these data sets I heard. I just need to click on apply. So for some reason it's crashing on, but I can show you what exactly the output would come like. Like I showed you. Exactly when Photoshop was opening. So it will be for every um, a data set. So that's the crux as to how it is done. And it will be for all the images um, that are there in my. We'll try that uh, later in the end if we do have time. But for now, we can move to the next feature, which is ash asset creation using CC libraries. So a lot of times when we uh, when we are creating assets, you know, uh, today is the uh, age of marketing and we need to market up uh, campaigns across all uh, platforms. So. In, in, a, in a situation like that, uh, if I have to create, you know, separate posts for my Instagram, for my Twitter, for my LinkedIn, that could be a hassle process. So I will try and showcase as to how with the help of Creative Cloud libraries, you can achieve um, fast creation of your data. Just one second. Get to the right files. So I have this file already created. Now it has got multiple artboards. So how you can create a new artboard is just go to your move tool, long press, hold press and click on the artboard tool and a new artboard would be created just like this. So right now I don't need it, so I undo it. Now you see that there, um, this is for an Instagram story. This is for the second artboard is for Facebook. Then there is Instagram post, then there's LinkedIn. Um, now the next session would be with a different title. It would be on a different date. It could be on different timing as well. And in the instructor would also be different. So one way of doing it is I go to every single artboard, make the changes, but how can I do it so that it all changes all at once? So that can be done with the help of Creative Cloud libraries. All I need to do is while I'm creating uh, my um, assets, I just need to save them to the library. It will take a minute for the library to load. So I have all of these components in my libraries. So this is the date and time and the instructor name. Uh, then this is again um, the title of uh, the session. And then we have the banner down here. So for example, if I want it for the next session, which is on 2nd of um, November, I double click it from within the libraries panel and uh, Just click my move tool so I can make changes, edit it. So I want it to be on 2nd of November. I just make the changes here. And I'm not teaching the session, the Raksha would be. So I'm changing the name from mine to the Raksha. And just click OK and click close. Yes, I would want to save the changes. And do you see how everything changes here? Like the date and time and the name of the instructor changes. Now, if I want to name change the session name here. It is maybe after effects. 101 or After Effects for UI UX designers.
for UI UX. I just leave it to that and click OK. Close it. Yes, I want to save it. And you see the title now changes. Now I don't want this Photoshop banner to be there because it's an after effects. Um, so I double click on it, go here and I have my logos library already here. I have my after effects icon. I just go and drop it here. You can delete it and then paste it. I just prefer placing it above it and then click OK. And close it. And now the icon has changed to After Effects. And so this is how you can magically transform um, your components or you can design across various art forms. Now, if you want all of these files to be saved independently and not like one Photoshop um, file, there's another way of doing it and that also through automation, which is called the Generate feature. But make sure under your Preferences panel, under plugins, your generate option is checked in, which is this is the generator feature and make sure enable by default it's enabled, but make sure if it's not to enable that there. Click OK and for every document that you create, you have to go under file and then go to generate and make sure that image assets is checked right now because I was creating it, so it's already checked, but generally it's not checked. So go to generate and for the file that you want to create multiple copies, um, just uh, check this option. Now, how, how will you create it? Now the location where this particular Photoshop file is closed um, and saved, you can go ahead and just what you need to do is insert the file format that you want it to be in. So I want the Instagram post in PNG file format. Hit enter and this will create the components for me. PNG. And this is well. Just by doing this, my assets would be created and I'll show you where. Under the automation session, you see generate assets. All of these files are created independently. So if you make any changes from within Photoshop, they will immediately replicate in there. For example, let's say if I need to make changes and make an After Effects 101, go to my Hit enter, close it. And it's changed to After Effects 1. If I go here, you see instantaneously without me doing anything, it's changed here. So that's how fastly it replicates from here and there. We do have two more features, which is like um, smart objects as to how you can use smart objects and replace contents from within them. And I'll quickly show you as to how exactly that can be done. For that, let me open a file. That is, um, that's not exactly automation, but it can help you achieve work faster. For example, if I have my mountains image open here and I want to place maybe a dog's image, which is here. So when I place embedded image, it automatically gets embedded as a smart object. But if it's something is not imported as a smart object, you can right click on it and click on convert to smart object, which is the option here, but it's already a smart object. So smart objects are generally non-destructive in nature. But if you at certain point of time don't want this top picture and want something else, so go here, click on replace contents and maybe choose this now. So this is how 
magically and without any hassle, it changes into it changes uh, the image for us. So this would be really useful when you know you have multiple icons or if you if you have things really intertwined. This, these are two really simple images and you, if you go along and try and replace them, they can be replaced like that as well. But if you have really complex images, intertwined objects, in that case, it would be really handy for you for you to replace them. So yeah, uh, pretty much um, that on that front. Uh, from my end, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them forward.